Hello, I am Dr. Y. Yeah, I am Dr. Y. And today we'll be talking about HCF, like HCF, highest common factor. Like you have in mathematics, we're talking about HCF today. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned. Please don't forget to join us on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube. And you can just, all you just need to do is type in Ask Doc Why, and you'll find us there. Also, you can also send us an email at askdocwhy at gmail.com. And if you want to watch our videos on YouTube, just type the name Dr. Y and look for something that looks like this yeah like this and you would see us on YouTube okay so I said earlier on that we'll be talking about HCF yeah you remember back then when we used to do mathematics and we used to say HCF is means the highest common factor any elementary school child should be able to define what HCF means in mathematics class Yes, I remember back then, and when we we're doing HCF, they say things like highest common factor is the largest integer or polynomial of highest degree. That is the exact divisor of each of two or more integers or polynomials, respectively. It was boo, boo, boo. It was a lot of story. But if you want to summarize what HCF means, it simply means what? When you bring numbers together, the highest number common to all of them is what we call HCF. That's very simple. So today, we're not talking about HCF or highest common factor in mathematics. We'll be talking about how HCF affects our health. Now, what is HCF? HCF could mean highest common factor. Yes, it could mean highest common factor as regarding your health. Likewise, it could mean highest common features. And what are these highest common features? Now, most people who present to the hospital, in short, I can say 95% of people who present to the hospital having one complaint, we either complain of headache, cough, or fever. In some cases, some people even come and complain of headache, cough, and fever. Now, that is not witchcraft and it's not somebody from your father's house or your mother's house or from your village that is shooting arrows at you. Headache cough and fever which is what we call hcf are just symptoms or warning signs the body gives to you in response to any health condition anybody with headache anybody with cough anybody with fever is just is just a symptom of an ailment now this may be a serious ailment or not and what happens is most people make a mistake of um, ignoring the symptoms or just treating them like uh, it's ordinary cough, it's ordinary, it's ordinary headache, it's ordinary fever. But this is what I don't want you to mix up. And don't forget, you should send your questions to our email. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us on social media so that you can get the latest information from what we're talking about. Now, let's start with the first one, which is H and H for headache. Headache is a symptom of pain anywhere in the head or neck. It could be in the head and neck. There are several causes of headache. Causes of headache can start from stress, fatigue, or even heartbreak. When somebody tells you they are no more interested in a relationship or probably you missed a contract or something or thereabout, it can cause headache. Injury to the head can cause headache. And that does not exclude slap. When somebody gives somebody a very nasty slap, it can cause um, headache. Exposure to loud music. If you stay in a loud place where the music is going, when you, or you probably sit down in front of a subwoofer in a party, or you go to the club and you have loud music, or people are shouting all around you like you're in a market square or in a noisy place, it can cause headache. Screaming can cause headache. Whether you are screaming or somebody screams on you can cause headache. When you're dehydrated, 
you can have headache and when you don't sleep properly you can have headache too much of cold can cause headache poor ventilation can cause headache exhaustion can cause headache when you have a generator close to your window and the smoke is coming in which will call carbon monoxide poisoning can cause headache inflammation of the sinuses which we call sinusitis can cause headache toothache can cause headache stressing your eyes to read or when you don't have bright lights to read can cause headache some drugs can cause headache malaria typhoid meningitis encephalitis tetanus tumor in the head blood clots in the vessels in the brain, brain can cause headache aneurysm which is more like um, a swelling of a vessel that it's likely or unlikely going to burst can cause headache when blood pressure is high which we call hypertension can cause headache and stroke can cause headache now i want you to imagine this scenario somebody has headache and that person keeps taking paracetamol and ibuprofen and takes all the pain relievers including tramadol and the person doesn't know that the cause of the headache is because he or she has high blood pressure now it may go it may lead to two it may lead to two things one that person may end up having a stroke and the person may not even have a stroke we've seen several cases like that of people who have headache who just come and say they've been having med headache for months and they say they've been taking paracetamol or some other medications and we check the blood pressure and we find out that the blood pressure is very high and we have to tell them oh the headache you were having is because your body was trying to tell you that something is wrong so it just looks like your car's temperature increasing it's just another way of the bot car telling you something is wrong somewhere. Maybe the radiator that is having fault. Maybe the radiator is naturally dry. So something must be going on before you have headache. And I want you to also imagine this scenario. Somebody has meningitis or has a space occupying lesion in the head, which we could call like a brain tumor or something like that. And the person keeps taking tramadol for several months. And the person comes to the hospital one day and we have to do we do a couple of tests and we find out that this person actually has a brain tumor or this person has meningitis what does this mean it simply means one thing the cause of headache could be harmless potentially harmful or even life-threatening someone who goes to a noisy place now could just have ordinary headache someone who could, probably has not been sleeping very well could have ordinary headache that's in quotes harmless somebody may be having what we call um berry aneurysm or space occupying lesion in the brain if that space keeps increasing that is potentially harmful but if that space keeps increasing it can become life-threatening and sometimes a lot of people actually don't make it before they get to the hospital but all they just keep saying is they have headache and somebody will be like probably somebody from the father from 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 their village that shot an arrow which actually went into the head and they probably lost the person from there what i'm just trying to say here is anybody with persistent headache should have his or her blood pressure checked and there are several things you have to check when checking blood pressure you want to check for the pulse rate you want to check for the synchronicity of the pulse rate whether it's actually equal so you have to have your blood pressure checked if you're having consistent headache the use of paracetamol or any strong pain reliever to suppress headache might be a ticking time bomb which may be deadly so please i would advise you once again always have your blood pressure checked if you're having persistent headache now we go to the second one which is cough Okay, sorry, excuse me. Mm. Ah. Now, sometimes cough goes with catabots. Let's forget about that part. <laughs> We're talking about cough today. I wasn't coughing, that was a joke anyway. I was just trying to show you how it looks like. In medicine, we define cough as a violent, explosive respiratory maneuver that tends to clear the respiratory system or the um, respiratory airway or the airway, especially the bronchial airways. Now, cough. Let me just put it, make it simple now. 
Cough is just a mechanism the body uses to remove any disturbance in the airway. Sneezing also occurs when there's irritation in the nasal lining, things like probably they throw a tear gas and it gets into your nose. You could sneeze or probably someone is frying pepper or you're cutting onions, this could make you sneeze. Why? Because there's an irritation in the nasal airway. Likewise, cough is when there's an irritation where in the, in the, in the bronchial airway. Now, the airway extends from the upper to the lower parts. That is, from the back of the nose to the terminal bronchioles. Now, you don't need to have those terminologies, but this is a picture of what it could look like. From the back of the nose to the terminal bronchioles. So when you're coughing, this is, exact, this is a simple thing that your body is trying to do. Your body is trying to say, there is something in, my, in the airway and I want to remove it. Why? Because it is not supposed to be there. Now, that thing in the airway could be, a, it's definitely a foreign body. Now, foreign bodies could range from several things. Foreign bodies in the airway could um, include things like you talking while eating or you eating while talking. Yeah, you talking while eating, like you're talking and you're eating. And you are eating and you're talking, like almost the same thing. It can, you can choke. So take for instance, you're eating something like rice, the rice gets into your airway. What happens? You definitely cough and you say things like, ah, give me water, give me water, give me water. Now, what your body was trying to do was what? To remove that rice particle or probably that fragment of stew or that fragment of vegetable or whatever that got into the airway. So that is exactly what the body does in that. That's a very simple mechanism of coughing. Everybody knows. Other things that can cause cough include smoking. Now, smoking has two faces, the active or the passive. Either you are smoking or somebody is smoking beside you can make you cough. Asthma can cause cough. Upper respiratory tract infection, which could include pharyngitis, tonsillitis, can cause um, cough. Lower respiratory tract infection, which could include pneumonia and bronchopneumonia, can cause cough. Other things could include tuberculosis, cystic fibrosis, certain drugs, especially some antihypertensives, then people with heart failure can cough. And heart failure, what happens in heart failure? What happens is because the heart has failed to work very well, there's accumulation of fluids in the lungs. And those fluids in the lungs irritate the lungs and the person starts coughing. Now, imagine again, the first time we talked about headache and we talked about high blood pressure. Now, we're talking about cough again and we are talking about high blood pressure. Now imagine this, somebody has tuberculosis and the person is taking cough syrup for one month. Do you think the person is really going to get better? Obviously no. So you can imagine somebody coughing and the person just goes to buy cough syrup and the person keeps taking the cough syrup and the person doesn't know he or she has tuberculosis. There is no way the cough will go. Another example I want to give you is imagine this, somebody who is coughing and the person start, goes to a pharmacy and buys antibiotics and the person just keeps taking antibiotics antibiotics for two weeks or even one month not knowing that he or she has heart failure and don't forget what we call heart failure we say heart failure is where there's actually accumulation of fluids at the base of the lung which occurs as a complication of hypertension now let me put it to you cough is not a death sentence but if you do not address it appropriately or at the right time, it can be deadly. Don't forget, cough is a response of the body to remove any irritation of foreign body in the respiratory system. In some cases, cough could be just ordinary cough, like probably like the example I gave the other time, probably you're eating or while talking or talking while eating and you had something get into your windpipe, you can cough. In some cases, it can be complex, like the case of the person who had tuberculosis taking um, cough syrup for many months. That can lead to complications, and the person may end up having a chest tube or some other invasive procedures done. Why? Because the person did not address it early enough. Using medications to suppress cough may lead to complications which may be fatal. And so, I just want to advise you, you should visit your healthcare provider, that is, go to the hospitals, you could have chest x, you could have series of tests done, you go to the microbiology, your doctor will most likely request for things like microbiology, you do sputum tests, they will listen to your chest, you could do an x-ray, 
and look for the cause of cough. Otherwise, you might just be having a ticking time bomb in your pocket. Now, we'll talk about the next one, which is fever. Remember we talked about fever last week and we said fever is having an elevated body temperature above the normal range of which any temperature recorded from the armpit that is above 37.5 degrees Celsius or 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit can be called fever. Now, don't forget we said last week that the normal body temperature when you're taking from the armpit should be between 36 Point zero and 37.0. Don't forget that's te that temperature depends on the environmental condition. Sometimes it could be a little bit lower than that if you are in a cold environment. Now, even though the core body temperature, because I got some questions saying and they heard this, they heard this. Yes, I agree. The best way to check for body temperature is through the core uh, is the core body temperature, which is to check the temperature through the anus. But most people wouldn't want to do that because why it looks irritated it looks irritating to some people also um you don't know if you could actually end up perforating the place if you do not handle it very well likewise it's not every thermometer you can just push in to the to the rectum or to the anus now that is the best way to check for body temperature but i would advise go or check the body temperature through the armpit it is easy it is simple. I don't expect you to just take your child's butt and just stick in a thermometer there and you say you want to check the core body temperature. It is okay, but at the same time, it could be dangerous if you do not know how to do it. So, fever is the body's response to the presence of certain chemicals which are released into the blood when the body senses a threat. Now, Fever occurs when the body is trying to, or let me just summarize it or make it simple. Fever occurs when the body is trying to defend itself against um, certain um, parasites or pathogens inside the blood. Just like headache and cough, fever may be harmless, potentially harmful, or life-threatening if it's not addressed promptly. Now, I'm going to explain that a little. If you take your child for immunization, your child will have fever. Your child could have fever. If your child is in a hot environment, your child could have fever. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is um, dangerous because, you know, for the case of the immunization, you may just tepid sponge, like we said the last time, exposed to air, tepid sponge, and continuously monitor the temperature. Same applies here. If a child has fever or an adult has fever, one of the things you have to do is what? Expose to air, tepid sponge, and continuously monitor the body temperature. Before we go into that again, because we talked about last week, so if you did not get that message, please, I would advise you, you can check on our YouTube channel, you'll get the message on fever, make sure you get the detailed message or um, education on fever. Now, we're going to talk about several causes of fever for those of you that watched it last week. You remember we talked about malaria, which is the commonest cause of fever in, the, in this environment. Yes, because we have a lot of mosquitoes around. In short, if you're not careful, self, you just start looking for one or two mosquitoes here. Okay, now this is a joke. There's nothing. There's no mosquito here for now. <laughs> All right. It could be caused by a mosquito. It could be caused by, fever can be caused by typhoid. Infections in the urinary tract can cause fever. Infections in the upper part of the throat can cause fever like cough, sore throat, pneumonia can cause fever, tuberculosis can cause fever, boil can cause fever, infection on the skin like cellulitis can cause fever, appendicitis can cause fever, meningitis can cause fever. And there was one thing I didn't mention last week. Infection in the ear which will cause otitis media can cause fever. Meningitis can cause fever, tetanus can cause fever, chicken pox can cause fever, measles can cause fever, oh, dehydration can cause fever, inadequate water intake can lead to dehydration and that can cause fever, 
excessive water loss can cause fever a lot of things can cause fever poor ventilation cancer ebola lassa hiv okay yes i've said a lot hepatitis i've said a lot what am i trying to say once you have fever always know this from our education of last week fever is a symptom fever is not a disease itself the cause of fever should be looked for and i like i said last week do not just use paracetamol to suppress the fever you know we said last week you could take paracetamol but after you take paracetamol if the temperature is above 37.8 or 37.9 and above take your child to the hospital immediately now that paracetamol is just to suppress the fever so that your child does not convulse and if you're an adult you can just go to the bedroom have your bath and just um, feel cool now don't forget you have to look for the cause of the fever and treat the cause of the fever and if you start treating the fever on your own probably just bought some medications around the corner and the fever does not subside now don't forget this it's very important i said if the fever does not subside meaning you have taken the medication you've been checking the temperature regularly and you notice the fever is not coming down it simply means one thing that the fever is not going so what you need to do you need to seek medical advice and when i mean seek medical advice you go to the hospital and let them conduct some tests and look for the cause of the fever now don't forget this we talked about hcf which are the highest common features people bring to the hospital don't forget headache cough and fever are warning signs to most health conditions any health condition most health conditions will likely come with headache cough and fever i wish you could actually ask me now just just mention one health condition you will definitely find out that the person would definitely have either headache cough and fever and sometimes person can even have everything like somebody who has um sore throat now we definitely have headache cough and fever somebody that has malaria we definitely have headache and fever somebody that has typhoid we definitely have what headache and fever somebody that has um um meningitis we definitely have what headache and fever so most times this HCF are just warning signs to health conditions people bring to the hospital. And if you overlook these symptoms, it could be fatal. And I'll tell you the truth, most people who come to the hospital and end up not getting fine or um, leading to one thing or the other that, you know I'm trying to say, I don't want to mention this because I know a lot of families have been, some people have been affected by this and they understand what I'm talking about they usually start with simple things like headache cough or fever or even all of them and you need to check these things if you need to check the cause of these things if you have any of the symptoms okay it's been dr y talking to you since morning on this series of dr y we talked about hcf today which is highest common features people come with to the hospital people complain with and we hope you will join us next week again on another episode where we'll be talking about something else. I'm not going to tell you now. We're going to be talking about something else. And don't forget to subscribe to our social media channels. Please join us on social media. Join us on Facebook. Join us on Twitter. Join us on Instagram. Join us on, um, on, on YouTube. In short, all these videos are on YouTube. And I'll be glad to hear from you. I'll be glad to have your questions. And I'll be so glad. I've been getting questions about some things which I've been encouraging. And it makes me feel happy. Like, yes, I want to talk about some of those things. If you give me the way, you could even send in your pictures of your questions and we could just put it up and just answer it alongside so thank you very much it's been dr y and i'll see you next week